Well, I got out of Morbius. I was never bored. I liked it. It's a doctor, actually. Hey everyone, this is James. Welcome to Digital Charcuterie. If you're new to the channel, please give us a subscribe, give us a like, comment. I want to know what you guys think. Are you seeing Morbius? This is our spoiled, filled review of the movie to end all movies. Morbius, the tale of Dr. Michael Morbius. And you know what? I walked into this expecting the worst and I came out a happy camper. How did we get there? Let's find out. The movie starts, um, just like in the trailers, the, the helicopter lands on Costa Rica. I think it's Costa Rica. You know what? There was little font on the screen. But we land, and then there's a, a cave, and it was like, we got to get out of here before dark. We got to get out of here before dark. And I was like, ooh, what's going to happen? Something's going to happen. They're gonna get, it's going to get dark, and they're going to get caught. Anyway, uh, Morbius cuts his hand, puts it up, and these bats come out, and then we cut 25 years prior. Okay, nothing bad happened. Cut 25 years prior. He's a kid. We find out that he has this. A problem we, we don't really know what it is but you know he's not healthy and, and he's fragile very fragile and then a new patient comes in and they all go to a boarding school I guess they're in uh, I think it's in Greece and they all go to this boarding school and uh, the, their mentor brings in this new kid Lucius uh, and then little little kid Morbius Michael Morbius is like I'm gonna call you Milo and he goes my name's not Milo and he says no but basically, everybody that's, that sleeps on that bed, sits in that bed, that patient is always named My Milo to Morbius. And one thing that this movie did terribly, terribly, was relationships. I just felt like, you know, you have these two should, you know, they're, they're like, we're like brothers, but you don't see it. They're just like, they're friends. And then Morbius is very smart. And they're like, we're going to send you to a special school for gifted kids. Wink, wink. In New York, Morbius is gone. I guess they stay in touch. I don't know. And then we, we cut to the, the present, I guess. I don't really know. The, the, the opening of this movie bounces around from time to time. Kind of like this review. Bow, 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 bow. It bounces all around. He wins a Nobel Prize for his research on blood. And we find out that he's developed this artificial blood. Which is it's good that he did. But he's trying to find a cure for him and, and Milo. And they have Martine Bancroft is his uh, um, colleague of his. In the comics, she's his assistant. But in this, she's a colleague. And I thought, that, I thought they did a... Uh, I thought she was good. I actually really liked her character. And I'm hoping to see more, and I'll get to that in a, in a little bit. Uh, but I thought she was fine. Again, the relationships in this film were the biggest weakness I had for this movie. I mean, there's a bunch, but the biggest weakness I had was the relationships. They're just like, oh, they're a couple. Oh, okay. You know, they, that's how it kind of is. And she's like, oh, no, you're you're experimenting on, you know, it's not going to go right. And he experiments, and experiments on a, a mouse, and the mouse dies. And, ah, the mouse will die. Uh, and then they have a patient. They go to see the patient, and Martine looks around, and somehow... I think they had to turn a corner at one point, but anyway, when she's in the room, though, she looks out and she sees the mouse is up, and the, mice, the mouse is feisty, and she goes, Michael, it works. So then they decide that they have to go uh, international waters to experiment on human, human experiment, and he's going to experiment on himself. He's got to get cured because he doesn't have much time to live. They make that very clear. Him and Milo don't have much time to live. They have they mentioned that quite a bit and they mentioned that they are the few against the many, the Spartans of old. That's what they compare themselves to, the Spartans of old, the few against the many. That's the theme that plays out. Not really a theme, it's just a phrase. That plays out uh, throughout the entire movie between those two. So they go international waters and this part, what I appreciated the most about this was it was very reminiscent to Morbius's comic book introduction. He's on a boat. This time he's with all the Murps and then he does he gets Martine to put the serum in his back. They strap him in. And all of a sudden, he's, and he goes in like this room. That's like bulletproof glass, locked up, can't get out. And he's locked in there. I don't know why. I don't really know why. It's not like they expected this. To this wasn't the anticipation of what would happen. But they were ready for it. And he's in there. And something goes wrong. And, you know, the captain, somebody goes down to check on him. And he's a, he's a dick. Shockingly, he's a dick. And uh, and then Morbius like wipes it. And Morbius is on the ceiling. It's kind of cool. And you've seen, this is the transformation scene that we see. And then he takes out everybody on the boat. They just he wipes them all out. Part I didn't like though was Martine kind of knocks her head, and then she's out for like a year. Like she just gets knocked out, and they're like, we don't want her in the plot yet. So set her aside, and she won't wake up until we need her. Uh, so that's kind of the setup. But what I liked about it, though, was how it connected to his comic book origins. And it reminded me a lot of the Thomas Jane Punisher movie. This movie did actually remind me a lot of that movie. Uh, not in, you know, story, but in, in just the way it was like, it, it, it respected its source material, but it, it, the execution wasn't necessarily the greatest. And I do enjoy that Thomas Jane uh, Punisher movie, and I enjoyed this movie, so I guess that says something about me. But 
but it kind of, it respected the source material. And I like that because when he comes back, he, he's talking he's like, what's going on? What's going on? And he comes to this conclusion that he needs blood to live. Uh, so he has the artificial blood, but he's learning that the first time he takes the artificial blood, he has six hours, and then it goes down to five hours and four, and eventually the artificial blood just won't do it for him, and he's going to have to feed on human lives, and that's not what Michael Morbius is about, and he wants nothing to do with that. But in his recording, in his research, he says that incident on the boat, which is very reminiscent of the comics, that incident on the boat can never happen again. He can never do that ever again. But it's a comic book movie, so it's going to happen again. Bring in uh, Milo, his best friend Milo, who also suffers from something and is very rich. I don't think we ever really get the reason why he's rich, but he's very, very rich. Whatever, he's rich. That's fine. And he's been funding Michael Morbius' stuff, and he's like, we got to get better, we got to get better, we got to get better. And then he finds out that Morbius is better, and then and Michael Morbius is like, well, I'm not. Are you crazy? I can't do this. I'm not going to turn you into a vampire. You're my best friend. I'm not going to turn you into a vampire. Uh, so he leaves, and I guess while he leaves, he grabs the serum that he wouldn't know was there, and he injects it into himself, even though Morbius had to get injected into it. I don't really know how he... But anyway, for plot's sake, he becomes um, a a vampire also and morbius uh gets arrested this whole thing and then he gets arrested and then milo pretends to be his lawyer walks in with his cane leaves without his cane and that's when morbius is like milo and then breaks out of prison literally like breaks out the wall and leaves and the, the movie then becomes this obsession piece between my of milo trying to find dr michael morbius it's it's an it's an obsession piece. That's what it's about. The the story is very simple, and I got I was never bored, never bored. I, the movie didn't bore me. That I mean, can what else can you hope for when you go to see Morbius? Of all the crap of you've heard about it, it never bored me. It, it just didn't. I mean, it bounced all around. It didn't make much sense. The music's actually very good. It just it, it never bored me, and I was on board. Uh, the character development it needed a little bit more. So the movie is basically about Milo wanting to kill Morbius. Uh, because Morbius doesn't want to kill humans. I, I don't know. I thought that the effects on the vampires were great, actually. And I thought Matt Smith was fantastic. Matt Smith has a few scenes where he really stands out. And really, he, he really had a lot of fun. And I like seeing that, especially in the villain. You want to see the villain having fun. And I thought he had a lot of fun in a few a few uh, spots, for sure. The special effects ugh, took me out at time when, especially in the fighting and the bullet time. Bullet time. Just took me right out. Um, they, they just try so hard to be cool, I think, and this did not need to be cool. I mean, it's a vampire movie. I think it, you actually needed to kind of like just tell it like a vampire story, like that Dracula story, but the Dracula needs to like just be, feast on blood forever. And when you find out that Milo, Milo right away tells you, I don't, I don't use the artificial trap. I want the real stuff. And, and early on in the movie, we see, early on in the movie, we see that, that when they're kids, the point of this scene when they're kids is to show that Milo has anger issues. And lashes out, and Morbius is smart and caring and passionate, and that's really why we go back. I mean, it would be better if we went back. He had a relationship, and they cared about each other, but instead, it was mostly just to show that one's smart, and one is is, is bitter, angry, and will fight people at, at a whim, and, and you know, basically kill. And which is what Milo does best. He kills. That's that's his shtick. He's a killer, cold-blooded killer, and he makes no bones about it. And he doesn't care. He does kill. I mean, the mentor dies. You kind of expect it to happen, and when the scene plays out, you're like. Oh, great this scene where he kills him but he uses him to get to michael morbius because again this movie is about him trying to flesh out michael morbius i you know i because i think he feels like morbius is going to try to stop him from being a vampire and that's the only thing that's keeping him alive and he's finally for the first time in his life he's been he feels great you know he spent his whole life as the as as being but the one that was bullied and now he gets to be the bully and that's what his kind of transition has become and this is the life that he's idolized forever and he finally has achieved it he's, he's gotten that through michael morbius and, and morbius wants to take it away because it's not right and he doesn't believe in that so that that's kind of the milo storyline and I, I quite enjoyed it and again you know you have the the martine bancroft who is obviously the love story the love story in the comics that brought her in and uh, she gets killed, and I was like, "Oh, what? I hope you know. I hope they're doing what I'm, what they're doing." But they don't really go into it. But she dies, and then right before she dies, she gives Morbius a kiss. But it's a bloody kiss. I don't know if it's her blood. It must be his blood. And she absorbs some of Morbius's blood, which is the vampire blood. Uh, and then she dies, forcing Morbius to feast on her. And again, she was killed by Milo in an attempt to, to lure Morbius out, which of course worked. Kiss. She dies. Pieces on her, 
and then they have a big fight in the sewers. Uh, and I actually, they use bats. So the bats, there's one point in the movie where Mobius says that he's kind of like a brother to the vampire bats that he has. And somehow they escape and they go into the sewer and they surround him and they lift him up and they kind of, he's kind of reborn as a, as a vampire again in this moment. And I kind of like the moment. Yeah. But it was a little bit whatever. But it, they lift him up and then he, he stabs, um, what this Milo. With a with the with the anti the antidote, but the antidote is fatal to vampires, and and he goes, no, you can't kill me now. And then um, the cops all show up, and bats fly out of the the crack because there's a crack now in the road, and the bats all fly out, and they're all like, whoa, there's bats, there must be Morbius. And then Morbius flies with them, and he flies through the night. I don't. They just randomly cut to to Martine laying dead, and her eyes open. And it's exciting because I'm hoping in a sequel, I hope, you know, if we get a sequel, this movie's going to make no money because there was, I think, four, maybe five people in my theater. And I'm not, that's not an exaggeration. One row had five people. That was it. Nobody in front of me saw, and the, and the worker walked in twice. And you could, you know this. I, I get, I like it. And I'm hoping they, they, the sequel, if they do one, they, they develop storylines and characters. And I'm hoping she comes back. And we learned just like in the comics where she's not a true vampire, but she wants to attain that. She wants to be a true vampire. And so she kind of has, you know, again, these altercations, kind of like Morbius. I like the, I like the way Morbius is kind of like uh, Jekyll and Hyde, the Incredible Hulk, where he's fighting with himself. And he's like, I don't want to I don't want to be this, but, uh, but deep down he needs to be this. And I kind of like that. It's like a self-aware uh, Hulk uh, or Jekyll and Hyde. I really, I, Jekyll and Hyde, I really appreciate that element of Morbius, which again, they don't really deal with too too much in this movie and i kind of wish they did but they didn't whatever but i'm hoping in the next one with martine that they would work on that which she wants to attain as being a true vampire and live forever with her love morbius and i'm hoping that's part of the plot but the problem with this movie is they're really forcing the sinister six down your throat at the end like they they shoehorn in vulture like right away all the leaks were accurate the purple thing comes up in the sky and then he just appears in prison, and then there's a news flash, and they're like, well, there's going to be a hearing. We're probably going to let him go free. And then he goes free, um, and then a couple more credits run randomly, and then Morbius drives down the road. Vulture flies up, and he looks a little bit different. I actually kind of liked his suit, though. I thought it looked kind of cool. And he says, oh, I don't know how I got here. It's probably because of Spider-Man. I'm going to put together a team. Are you in? And then uh, I can't remember if Morbius says yes, or just looked at the camera and the credits rolled, and that was it. But the, the that... Those post credit scenes, they leaked and they sounded bad in the leak and they I thought they were executed even worse. That second scene with Vulture, it felt like it was shot by somebody completely different. The cinematography just didn't mesh with the rest of the movie. It was weird. It was like when you watch a Marvel movie and the director of the next movie directed the post credit scene because that's a part of that movie. That's what it felt like. Like it was disjointed in that way. But they, again, this is their plan is to push the Sinister Six. They want to get us to a Sinister Six and this is the first one. Fine, whatever. I kind of wish they just focused on the characters because the problem with this movie is the pacing's weird off the top and there's no real character development they, they, i wish we got to know the relationships a little bit better uh, but again i enjoyed it i wasn't bored I, I don't know what else to say it just you know this is what it was and it's morbius and you go in you know thinking the worst and you come out on top and they just they did a good job they were scratching the surface of all these plot points and characters and they never got deep in that and I hope if they do a next one that they they focus on the relationships a little bit more, make me care a little bit more, and deal with that going forward. But again, I love that I lo I just love the idea that he's like I can't let what happened on that boat happen ever again. So he has an inter internal struggle trying to figure that out throughout the rest of the movie, basically. So I really enjoyed that, um, and I enjoyed the film. I don't know, it's like a six out of ten. It's not if you don't if you want to pass on it and you have no interest in seeing it this isn't something that you know you desperately have to see at all i mean even if they do a sinister six movie and they're like well they'll start in a more because i think you could still avoid it and not watch it and if you're if you were on the fence about it and it comes on uh, netflix in october watch it that's what i'd say all right everybody i'm james thank you so much for watching give us a like and a subscribe and until next time may you be the master of your own universe the bad guy <laughs> Morbius.